Hey everybody! Hi! We're on an adventure and it's been probably around three years. Long, long time. A long, long time since we decided to do a car vlog of our adventures over the peninsula. Massive changes, not only to the hair, be it, but in terms of equipment, what we use, how we use it. So today we are planning on traveling to a place called Rydal. We're gonna go and explore the cave. And the waterfall, and the gardens. And the gardens, and Rydal Hall. Obviously today, Keith and I are gonna be trying something a little bit new. We're fancying a little bit of landscape photography, which isn't something we would normally do. We tend to focus more on people, creative things that are a little bit out of the norm. And we've been really interested in watching Thomas Heaton. So Thomas Heaton, if you're out there and you don't already subscribe, click like and subscribe to the channel as we do to you, follow a fellow photographer. We're only down the road. Yeah, we are actually only down the road from uh, Mr. Heaton. And recently we've just watched his Winter Scotland episodes, which have proved to be very interesting in composition, in subjects and again location. So we decided that we're going to have a little trek to the Lake District which obviously is our favourite place for many, many reasons. And when we're done at Rydal, we're going to call back at Ullswater as well, up Moody Bridge. So we're trying to do that. We're trying to work timings around potentially sunset. It's not looking overly clear. There is some cloud coverage over in the lakes this morning. I think pretty much everywhere. But when we go over to Rydal, that'll be the furthest west we've gone, really. We tend to stay very sort of northern lakes. We normally do like Windermere, Keswick, Ullswater. That's probably about it really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we've never been like to Buttermere yet. We've never been um, to Waswater. So we have planned that over the next two to three months, we're going to try and go and see some of these other lakes. And not only for photography reasons, but we're going to get the paddleboard out. We're going to do a little bit of swimming. Just enjoy some outdoor time. We're going to try and create some content today for a bit of an interesting vlog. We've just programmed in the location for the car park at Rydal. Satnav's telling us it's going to take us two hours, two minutes. We've got packed lunch planned. We've got picnics and treats. And we're going to see what else we can get up to for the rest of the day. So we will check in with you very, very soon. We're here. We've arrived at Rydal. Just pulling in to Rydal Hall. We're going to see if we can get some parking up here at the actual hall and um, access the grounds and the gardens here at the hall first before heading over to the caves. So it's just the caves are trying to find an access point for parking. Welcome to the hall. I don't know whether we can reception, campus check-in, car parking's £10. We're going to have to pay that just to have a parking to have the security of the parking for the day and not have to necessarily worry about it, I don't think. We're just unpacking the car. So we've arrived here at Rydal Hall and Gardens. We've just been and paid for our parking, which is £10 for the day, but that also gives you a £5 discount voucher from the cafe. So we're gonna go and get a hot drink, I think. Yeah. Have a little mooch around. And then we're gonna head off down into the gardens and the waterfall. So we're just gonna get geared up, pack up the bag, get the camera and the drone, etc., And um, then we'll do a little bit more vlogging. So we're geared up, geared up with the camera, on, bags, coats, hats, sticks because I'm old now so I need a bit of a stick and we're going to head down to one of the spots in the site that is for the, it's called a waterfall grotto, it's one of the most pictured spots at Rydal um, and it genuinely creates a lot of a buzz with photographers because capturing shots apparently it was one of the favourite spots of Wordsworth when he was creating work, this is one of the first ones we've come to, so we've already been and sampled the um, gardens tea shop when we got here We've had a lovely mocha and a hot chocolate. Toilet facilities just around the back there. And again, if you pay the £10 parking, which might seem quite excessive, you actually get a £5 voucher to use in the tea shop. Dogs and woody boots are welcome, which is always a bonus if you come with your furry friend. But again, we've chosen to start the day off here at the one of the waterfall spots. So Kate's going to set up. He's brought a tripod and our Fuji camera. And um, we're going to try and get a couple of images while we're here. See what it's like, see what we can capture. Again, it's a bit of a new one for us because we're not used to doing landscape. So it is all going to be quite new. But as you can see, and here, very, very picturesque. Um, you can actually stay here in some holiday cottages, but this is definitely one of the spaces we're going to try and capture. So I'm going to pop you down on here just to have watch a little bit of a montage of waterfall. Do a little bit of long exposure there, Key. Yeah. Getting the settings right, looking at what it looks like from the back of the camera. And again, looking at that beautiful view. Very, very picturesque. And we're going to head down over to that little spot there. 
the grot. Most photographed spot possibly in the whole of these grounds. Rydal, the grot and waterfall. Some fantastic wintry scenes there. We're going to go and try and capture something very similar but with a very much autumnal stroke winter feel without the snow. So we're just going to make our way over to another viewpoint of the grot. So you can come and visit this between half eight and four in the summer evenings. I'll just get the gate, make sure we close our gates behind us. And this is the very picturesque grot stroke waterfall. Different angle from what we saw at the top of the bridge, but we're going to make our way down into the grot so that we can take a photograph. I'm not quite sure how we get the access to down there, but we're going to have a little mooch about see what we can find. Keith setting up another shot here to take from up on the bridge. And then around and we're here at the grot and as that sign clearly does say guys swimming is not permitted just because of obviously the natural flora and fauna i do believe that there are crayfish that um reside in these waters which we want to keep their natural habitat as natural as possible let's see what it's like when we open this door well we could be in words with south itself that is beautiful Appreciate it. it's got a bit dark guys, so there's uh, no artificial lighting in here, which is quite nice actually. But again, I'm just going to set you down there for a little while. There you go. So we've just finished shooting inside the grot Ooh, to the dark into the dark into the light and use the dji mini two two um just to capture a little bit of aerial uh video and some photos um it's really hard because obviously it's quite enclosed so we can't really take it up too high for fear of yeah. clipping branches and trees. Can't do the epic shots of like one forward and backwards and up and down yeah and those huge whatever we got yeah we got what we got you can see we've got Keith down there setting up for some drone footage again of the hall. And I think that road there would take us round to some of the most western lakes. It's not somewhere we've been, somewhere we've we need to explore in more detail. I remember the name of the sheep. They're called Herdwicks, the grey ones. Look a little bit like me, bit of a silver fox impersonation. So we're here at the edge of Grasmere. We're just trying to get some um, panel shots and some more exposure of the lake itself. Keith's there setting up his shot. Temporarily popped the tripod in the water just to get a nice sort of glassy finish. There's a little bit of a breeze and intermittently there's some drizzle. But as you, I don't know if you can see, but the clouds have come rolling in over the top of that um, <coughs> horizon there. Moved down load since we got here. And just keep uh, slowly keeping golfing. Come on, but that's the shot he's trying to get. I have a lone boat house, which is quite a nice shot. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of people starting to arrive. It's very, very busy. Just in a moment there. And just up to the left of the screen is the path we're going to take up to the caves. So we're still on route up there. We've stopped multiple times to try and get multiple different shots. Just try to take advantage of the weather as it is at the moment. So as you can see, we're heading up the track. We've chosen to come lakeside to Grasmere, our walk up. We've got some ducks having a little bit of a bath. We've got some fishermen out on a dinghy. But yeah, we've chosen to do the lakeside uh, path across. Some nice light up there. A nice beam of sunlight has just produced itself over at the top sort of western side of this ridge just lighting up that um, wooded area and again it's really really quite nice pictured quite well with those anglers in the bottom of the frame 
it's quite actually a really good shot really like that again detailing on what's going on on the lake so we'll reach it <laughs> <laughs> we're alive sort of after a little bit of a detour so we obviously thought we were going <clears throat> around the edge of the lake to come up when we checked on the map we pretty much walked past it <laughs> but at the lake level so what we've done is we've walked up a really steep hill walked along the lake all the way past it we've had to come back and then up a hill and then we're here and then here we are so it is there's Red Owl Cave because it's a little bit dark in there so once the light adjusts you'll be able to see but this is the stone step path that people use to get across in, in, underneath the lake itself in the cave and again we're going to have an attempt to go through so follow me through and I'll take you in so as loads of people have mentioned there's absolutely loads of fish in the um, in the water, I don't know if you can see it there, but um, loads and loads and loads of fish. Yeah, we had this question last night when we were doing some research. It's like, how did they get here? Who brought them? Somebody's obviously brought them. And they populated the waters of the cave, as you can see. Relatively friendly. But again, uh, like the water is almost crystal clear. It's tropical in its colour and its appearance. But again, you've got. We've got the dogs joining in the water swim. But again, we're going to make our way along and through. Just keep an eye on the stones. We're going to go around this way, following all of these little steps. So you see, it is wet, it is slippy. It's best to wear appropriate footwear. Some sort of walking boot, something with a little bit of a grip. But again, we're through and over. And here we are underneath. Absolutely fantastic. Lots of view coming in from the other side. And so just again quite picturesque. I imagine during the summer months it'll be really nice in a warm, cool place to come and sit and hang out once you've been on your walks. So we've made our way into the cave and we've set up and done a couple of shots. And as you can see obviously it's quite busy, general public, ourselves, everybody's pretty much here enjoying obviously this fantastic view. So it's quite hard to get any particular shot without anybody in it, so we're just having a little bit of a Look at what's going on, but as you can see, the water is relatively clear to be perfectly honest. It's you know, you've got your natural uh, waterfall in the top of the caves, showing obviously the quarried out um, space because this was obviously part of the quarry at one point. So we've just stopped at like a vista point where you can see right off the edge of Grassmere and lots of people have built stone towers. So we're going to use one of those as a potential feature for our image, see what we get, see what it looks like. Clouds are rolling in over the top of those hills nicely, but still not a great amount of light at the moment. So we're just trying to um, see what we can see, as you can see that that's one of the stone towers, I'll zoom in a little bit to give you an idea so again, try to keep that as your focal point but obviously keep in that horizon which looks quite nice we're back at the car we got back from the cave in relatively one piece yeah yeah a bit, a bit warm Keith was a little bit sweaty <laughs> not, not, not in a good way both really impressed with the boots. Mm -hmm. We've took them off to drive across to Ullswater where we're going to go and park up and go for a walk around Ullswater Lake. I'm um, not sure on how far we'll get because of timings. Sunset is set for? Uh, 5 to 5. We'll get there for 10 to 4. So we've got about an hour. No. We'll see how it goes, see what the sky's like and yeah. see how the sun's setting. If not, we'll just enjoy a nice leisurely walk around Ullswater. So let's see what happens there. We'll keep you posted.
We um, vlogged when we arrived at Pooley Bridge to see where we were going. And then and we got out and went for a walk, but I decided to chuck it down. I wasn't getting the camera out. I didn't really think drizzly shots of us complaining about the weather would be great footage. But we did try to take some images intermittently in between the heavy downpours and then the really drizzly, horrible, sparse rain. So whether they worked or not, we don't know. We'll see. But we'll put them on the video if they're any good. Yeah, that'll be. Yeah, some fo some videos, some photos of the day, generically, what we've got that we think is decent. We'll mm. probably put on at the end or intermittently through the video to show you. But yeah, we've ended up back at our favourite place again i don't know if you can see it i don't think you can that little building um to kate's uh, right shoulder is the boathouse so that is like our favorite place ever in the whole of the lake district even more so in the middle of the road in the middle of the road we <laughs> we were in the middle of the lake nearly just to get a photo <laughs> so we just tried to get a picture using our phones just it's something we do every time we come here um but there are some mad nutters out in the middle of the lake at a uh, late evening swimming it's pitch black it's freezing cold but hey ho it's wet in the water and it's wet outside so who cares so yeah we'll um We'll like see what comes of this uh, vlog and hopefully we'll see you for some more in the Lake District soon. Yeah. Yep.